Hello and welcome back to more Elden Ring. My name is Hollow and today we're talking about something you may have heard about recently. The Barbarians of the Badlands, the supposed DLC for Elden Ring and an apparent title leak as part of the release plan for the financial year of 2023 for Bandai. In that apparent leak, we see many titles and a general timeline for the release, such as Armored Core, Little Nightmares 3, Tekken 8, and hey, one I'd actually be happy with, Code Vein 2. But most importantly, Elden Ring and this title, Barbarians of the Badlands. As a concept, this is exciting. The thought of going to that known area that Godfrey originates from, where the Tarnished left to and returned from. A brutal, desert-style wasteland of roaming clans of barbarians, warriors with their own culture, led by chieftains, the most powerful of each group. As a potential DLC, this is something I actually covered in a lore video, all about the other lands outside of the lands between, their cultures and what we know about them. And there's potential for us to travel out to these lands, but I think the Badlands is frankly the most likely reasonable option to do that. Now I'm going to talk about the details of the Badlands in a little bit to give you some more context, but before we really do that, I should talk about the leak itself and how the truth of it is a bit questionable. When we slow down and look at this thing, well, we see that the potential Elden Ring DLC is seemingly very far away quarter three of 2023. The game released at the end of February 2022, and this first DLC would be, what, over a year and a half later. That seems very questionable based on the history of From Software's DLC releases. Dark Souls 2, for example, had three DLCs release, and then a whole update and final DLC in the form of the Scholar of the First Sin, all before even a year had passed since the original launch of the game. Its first DLC was announced but three months after the original launch, so the pace in hindsight of that was wild. But to be fair, we shouldn't forget Elden Ring is a massive game. A DLC will likely need to match that in some way to feel properly satisfying, so I'm sure it takes longer to develop something of that size. But what about the other games? Let's look at their timelines for DLC as a proper comparison. Dark Souls 1 released in September 2011 with the Artorius of the Abyss DLC which came out 13 months later in October 2012. Dark Souls 2 had that crazy timeline we just mentioned but then Bloodborne released in March 2015 with its DLC The Old Hunters only 8 months later in November 2015. Dark Souls 3 released again in March in 2016. The Ashes of Ariandel DLC that came out in October of the same year even faster 7 months later but then it was followed up by a second DLC the Ring City in March 2017, 12 months since the original launch of the game. So on average we see at least one DLC within a year and in multiple cases we see multiple DLCs in 12 months or less. Therefore a year and a half wait for this DLC it seems a bit far-fetched, a little too far away. We're talking about their most successful game ever, that they're quote considering a number of measures to help customers continue to enjoy this title, end quote. That sounds like they're going to try more than one method to retain our attention. That could be multiple DLCs, and they obviously have a history of doing that. That could be multiple updates and DLC, such as releasing the clearly planned to be used arenas, all the factions and rank up systems we've seen data mined and more. To have such a long wait for a DLC with that in mind seems really strange. And if that timeline is actually real, that's really unfortunate. But consider this, some people have suggested this might not be your normal quarter three of a financial year. You know, Bandai is a Japanese company, the Japanese financial year apparently ends in March compared to September. That could mean this timeline is actually suggesting around 2022 December, and that'd be a lot more logical and reasonable, wouldn't it? But again, is this even real? It still seems a bit unlikely. I've read claims that both the Tekken and Tails logos shown are actually fan-made, and the fact that there's multiple Dragon ball games that's pretty surprising too the name itself feels a bit off barbarians of the badlands that feels very on the nose and you'd normally expect something a bit more interesting or clever in the naming in itself it goes against community speculation which by the way is fine obviously but still the most popular and common theory is that the dlc will be related to mikola i've made videos about this topic and the dream world that mikola likely inhabits currently cut content of the dream world with an npc story that would lead you to learn about it exists and the dream world exists in our game as we know it with the deathbed dream it'd be weird to just ignore all of these lines that seem to suggest we're going to go into the dream world if we consider other entrances like say the old hunters dlc you needed a special item and then you'd go to a specific 
spot and be grabbed and taken for a portal. Much the same in Dark Souls 1. You needed to find a secret portal, have the item, be grabbed and taken through it. Mikula and his cocoon, well that would be the perfect place to have an entrance. He's even got the hand like waiting to grab you. It just makes sense. It's just logical. So via Mikula, we could enter a dream world that would allow them to do really anything with the story and it fit into our current timeline well. It'd give them a nice way to do a whole new region and go mad with it. So yeah, that's a popular theory for good reason, right? That sounds good to me. And yet this is obviously not that. But let me twist it again. Do you really think they're only going to do one DLC? for their most successful game ever, even with their history of doing multiple DLCs, even with them saying they're looking into multiple measures to keep us interested. Personally, I think they'd be fools to do only one DLC for Elden Ring. And if I had to pick concepts for DLCs, I could pick the Dream World, yes, and obviously you could pick one of the outside regions like the Badlands, but you could also do something to do with the Outer Gods and explore that. There's some major lore there. So they have so much potential that it would be mad to do just one, let alone the financial reasons to do multiple. So with that in mind, perhaps the longer timeline of a year and a half makes sense if they're actually going to release a different DLC before that, and that would work well. So even if this leak isn't real, the potential is there, it's still a great concept. The Badlands are brutal. We're talking about a place Godfrey came from. Originally known as Horalu, he was a chieftain of immense power with an insane bloodlust. Horalu was seemingly picked as the strongest of his people, a place that seems to breed these warriors. Upon returning with the Tarnished when he was banished, Godfrey became Horalu again in concept but not in reality, because he still had Sarosh on his back, so his lust for battle was suppressed. I think that's why he was defeated, and why his axe was broken, why he was killed in the Badlands when he returned. He was brought back to life though by the grace, much like we were, so Godfrey made his way back to the lands between to try to claim the throne. But this does tell us that, yeah, the Badlands is a very hard to exist place. Even Godfrey couldn't survive without his bloodlust. The class that you can pick, the hero, hails from the Badlands in concept. The armor set you're given explains its design a bit. It's proof that a wearer has slaughtered countless foes. Following the example of their chieftain, Horalu, the brave warriors of the Badlands shun excess adornment. So we're talking about people who have these champions, people who've killed countless foes, and they aren't even a chieftain. A chieftain is clearly the most respected, the strongest. But it doesn't seem like there's only one chieftain. Various weapons mention the Badlands, like the Great Axe, and that is apparently a weapon of choice for Badland chieftains. So that suggests Horalu was never the only chieftain. Could be that there's a succession of chieftains, or that there's multiple existing all at once, like different clans. You see, another from the Badlands wears this garb and can be made the leader of Stormvale. We're talking about Nephili Lu, potential descendant or even daughter of Horalu. She helps us defeat Godric as the adopted daughter of Gideon. So Gideon seems to know something about her origin and wants to use her for her purposes. But she's not the only person who seems to know about her origins. Selavis from Rani's faction, he wants to enslave her to use as a powerful puppet. But when you meet her at the village of the Albanorix, she mentions her childhood in the Badlands. And she describes it as the oppression of the weak, the murder and pillage that goes unchecked, and it's a nightmare made by men. That's the place we're speaking about going in a DLC. It sounds very intense, I'd be interested. We know a little bit about the animals of that region too, in the Stormhawks and the Lions, which we of course meet in Elden Ring currently. We could maybe meet versions that are bigger and stronger. Imagine the Hawk enemies, but even more annoying. But to get back on track and be serious, the Badlands is a harsh wasteland where the strong oppress the weak. Clans of fighters raid and pillage one another, and it seems like a lawless place. That surely leads to a constant struggle, and that must breed particularly strong warriors who must shine like diamonds in the rough. Would we go there in the current timeline? Or would we go in like past situation, like when, when the Tarnished were originally banished, or maybe even before that, when Horalu was yet to become Godfrey? There's a lot of potential there, so I do hope we get to see it. If the Barbarians of the Badlands isn't a real title leak, I still hold out hope for multiple DLCs, and I still think this could be one of them, like that setting and concept. But with all of that said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this now. I've posed a few questions here, so let me know what you think. Is this a real leak? Will we wait so long for our first DLC? Will there be multiple, in fact? And would you like to see the Badlands in a DLC form? Yeah, I'm very interested to see what you guys make of this. Otherwise, though, that's everything I want to talk about today. If you'd like to see more discussions and videos of this nature, let me know with a like on this video. For now, though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh, goodbye.